My name is Shannon Morgan, and welcome to Bigfoot Encounters Narrated. In August 1988, in Hag Lake, Alberta, my ex-wife and her family were out of the area of Hag Lake. Her dad was driving a grader for the fire crews, building roads to access the fire areas. There wasn't much to do, so they fished a lot at the lake. This one day, Denise and her mother, brother, and nephew were fishing at one end of the lake when Joe, her brother, said, Hey, look at the bear on the other side. So, sure enough, they looked across, and about one kilometer across, there was this huge hairy thing walking on two legs and coming around towards them. They described it as being big, at least over six feet, and moving very quickly on two legs. This creature did not drop to four legs at any time. The color is the odd thing. She says that it was gray and black in color. It was moving too fast for her mother's liking, so they left and went back to their camp. That night, at camp, Joe went to take the garbage back to the pit about a kilometer away and came back white as a ghost and took their dad back with him and showed him some huge footprints. In June of 1991, near Lake Louise, Alberta, we were walking single file, with approximately 10 to 30 yards between each of us, on the Stanley Glacier Trail along the Alberta and BC border. My roommate was out front, and then about 10 yards behind him was my brother, and then I was about 20 yards behind him. Then were my three other friends, who were brothers, behind me with their dog. As we were descending the trail, about two-thirds of the way back to where we had parked, there was a bit of a commotion up ahead of me around a slight bend, so I couldn't really see what it was. My friend's small yappy dog went tearing past me towards it, and the brothers behind me chased ahead past me, trying to call it. I, on the other hand, was playing it cool, thinking big deal, there's a horn sheep or some hikers in the trees ahead or whatever, nothing I hadn't seen before, so no sense running ahead in panic. It turned out that something had crossed our path between the lead person and my brother, coming from the upward slope to our left, going across the path to the right, and then down the slope to our right and off into the trees. As I caught up to everyone, maybe a second or two behind the three brothers, they were staring into the trees and the dog was yapping. All I saw was a glimpse of something crashing through the trees. The dog stayed barking for a few seconds and then took off chasing whatever it was, during this, I had started to ask my brother what it was, since he was the only one who really got a good look as it crossed in front of him. My brother said that some kid ran down from there and jumped across the path. He said it would have been around six feet tall, but he didn't notice any clothes. He also said it had a lot of long kind of blonde hair, really long hair, all down his back. At this point, the chase with the dog and whatever it was chasing had stopped. The dog seemed to have tree whatever it was, about 75 yards away. Then we started to hear the sound of what was definitely a tree creaking, as if about to fall. But it would creak, and then stop. Creak, and then stop. This happened maybe four times, when we noticed that we could see the top of the tree in question, moving in time with the creaking. It was a still-standing burnt tree, further down the slope, whose top was visible from our higher vantage point. After the fourth creak and sway, the tree finally crashed down. It was a pretty big crash, and seemingly a substantial tree. This really freaked the dog owners out, and the dog went silent after the crash. They started frantically calling for their dog, but it took a good 15 seconds before it showed up or made any noise. When we realized that this thing had seemingly pushed over a tree, we thought it was best time to leave. My reasons for thinking it was something other than human are as follows. It had an overabundance of hair, it had a lack of clothes, and it leapt across the path that would have been very difficult to accomplish for a person. The landing area from the leap was treacherous. My brother thought he leapt across and then landed on a fallen tree trunk. The apparent pushing over a tree would seem to have taken a lot of strength. It was around 3 to 4 p.m. and overcast, but it was well lit. There was also a body of reasonably still water further back along the trail, which we had passed maybe 10 minutes earlier. 
in September 1993, near Nordegg, Alberta. This sighting took place when we all decided to take a walk one night. We all headed down a hill past the boys' cabin. We came to a set of railroad tracks, turned left, and started heading to an old cemetery that we were told about. We found the cemetery, and we had all explored. Some of the graves were from the 1800s to the 1900s. After about an hour, it started to get dark, so we all decided to head back. As we were going back up the tracks, we all of a sudden heard one of the girls scream. When we all turned around, we saw her flashlight shining up on this old tower. I wasn't ready to see what I saw, and to this day, my hair still stands on end when I tell this. But on top of this tower, which was about 50 feet high, stood this creature. When we all shined our lights on it, it proceeded to jump off this tower. When it raised its arms to jump off, you could see clear as day all the hair hanging from its arms. But what gets me is how it could jump off this tower, like it was jumping off of a one-foot-high curb. After it landed on the ground, it took off into the bushes. We could clearly hear trees breaking as it ran away. All of a sudden, there was this silence, and then about a minute later, there was this loud, eerie, high-pitched scream, and it literally just went right through you. There was also this weird odor just lingering in the air. There was around 14 to 20 people who saw this, and we were all hiking. In the main cabin, there are articles and pictures of sightings from over the years and around that area. In July 1995, near Jasper, Alberta. A friend and I were hiking on the Sulphur Ridge Trail. We came to a piece where the trail had fallen away, so we decided to stop for a break. I took out my camera to take a picture of the hot springs below. I happened to look up the summit, and I noticed that there was someone standing there. I started waving because I thought it was a person, and since we were the only ones on the trail, we'd be walking past them anyways. I even pointed my camera at it, but I didn't take a picture because of the distance. This thing didn't wave back, and that's when I took a really good look at it. It was about 6pm, so there was still plenty of light. What I saw looked like a dark brown man covered in hair. It stood upright and had arms and legs like a human. After a few minutes, it started to run down the face of the mountain. We were below the tree line, but in well sight of the summit. At that point, I said, Oh my god, that guy is nuts. I thought it was a mountain biker because he descended so quickly. It came straight down without using the switchbacks, and that's when I knew that this was not a human. I immediately thought that maybe it was a grizzly or possibly another animal. When it hit the tree line, I realized it couldn't possibly be a bear, because it stood much taller than some of the trees. My friend and I hadn't heard of any sightings, so we didn't have any preconceived ideas of what we were looking at. We continued hiking to the summit, mainly out of stupidity. We didn't talk about what we saw or what it could have been. When we hit the top of the tree line, I realized that there's no way a person could have ran down the face of the mountain the way that I witnessed this thing do. The face was covered with loose rocks and gravel, and it made it hard to descend at a fast pace, let alone a run. When we got home, we talked to our roommates about the sighting, and a friend said it must have been a Sasquatch. We went back the next day, but we didn't find anything. We did, however, take note of the surroundings. The trees at the tree line were well over seven feet tall, and this creature towered over them. The area in which it ran into is a place where no human can get to. There are no trails, and it is too steep to try to climb down. The forest there is very thick and green, and anyone who would stay off the trail could easily be lost. On the second hike, we heard something behind us on our descent for quite a few meters. Through the light trees at the tree line, an animal of some sort stayed behind us. We had very little light left, so we were pretty spooked, and we ran most of the way down. I took very many pictures that trip, and I scanned all of them to see if I got a picture of it, but I did not. I hope you enjoyed today's encounters. I want to thank you so much for listening. It would mean a lot to me if you could like and comment on this video, or even share it with your friends. 
We now have Bigfoot Encounters narrated merchandise. The link to the store is in the description of this video and on my YouTube channel page. Thank you again for being here and for all the support. I hope to see you in tomorrow's video.